back with brunch a taste of tobago now guys thank you so much for staying with us uh thank you so much Joel. thank you so much wendy oh my gosh inspiration inspiration at its best and i also love the fact that we get to explore so many avenues on brunch a taste of tobago and my next guest uh, speaks very candidly to that as a matter of fact. We're going to delve in to a very interesting discussion. We're going to be speaking on the lionfish. And those of you who are avid readers and researchers, uh, the lionfish has been quite a buzz uh, in the environmental space as an invasive species but it's so much more than that and to tell us about that we're going to be speaking with mr sean robinson oh my gosh a pro scuba diver you know one of the names that always comes up when you're speaking about marine life and the environment and he's here today to just delve in a bit about the lionfish uh, most of you just know about the negative aspects or negative connotations, but there are also uh, positives in the narrative. And Sean is going to be speaking to us a bit about that. Please stay with us because we're also going to feature uh, our chef, Hotel Murray, is here. And he is a connoisseur of uh, preparing lionfish meals. So don't go anywhere. You need to stay and see what's going on on Brunch at Taste of Tobago. So, Sean, thank you so much for and good coming. Morning. And yeah. it's a pleasure being here with you this morning um, to give you all a little insight into this whole um, lionfish. Yeah. Uh, just to give you a quick little history, um, the lionfish, as you most people know now, it's an invasive species. And it first arrived into our waters here in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, it started not right up in Florida. Um, they believe either they were released in a while from some aquarium enthusiasts or a particular storm that damaged one of the marine aquariums got them out into the wild. And it's, so it took them about 10 years to travel from north of the Caribbean and us being for the south. We were the last ones to see them in, um, for last ones to, to get them arriving here in 2012. Um, one of the main problems with the lionfish is that they have no natural predators in our waters. Oh, wow. So if left alone, they will quickly overrun our reefs because they are a voracious predator in the sense of they eat sometimes up to 60% of their body weight on a daily basis. So um, we started an education campaign 10 years ago and um, now the lionfish has gone from a pest to profit. And what I mean by that, it's now one of the most sought after sustainable um, fish species for the restaurant trade um, to the point where it has also probably become one of the most expensive um, uh, fish that you can actually could buy. So wow. now there's a huge trade um, with divers getting involved in capturing them and uh, keeping control on the reefs at the same time. So, mm -hmm. so from a pest to a predator to profit, as we say. Um, so by keeping a, a, a constant um, supply of them to the restaurant trade will also help to keep the, keep the predators off the reefs. You know, it's so interesting that you're saying from predator to, to profit, you know, because it's such a large, it's like a, it's like a leap. It's like a large leap in terms of what we can get from the fish. So it started off invasive species, as you said, no known predators. So just think about the effect that that would have on the environment, the marine life, because no predators, hey, I eat in any and everything. Exactly so. So again, that was that was a huge fear mm -hmm. when they arrived. And, um, but as I said, by a process of education, teaching people how one to catch them, to how to handle them, because there is a downside 
in the handling of them. And right. I can just show you quickly here. Um, we have one of the lionfish here. And they have on them mm -hmm. some serious spines that right. are toxic, right? So you have to make sure when you're handling them, mm -hmm. when they are alive, these hypodermic needles, as we call them here, mm -hmm. don't puncture you. But it's right. quite, it wouldn't kill you, but it's quite painful, right? So this is the, the, the little predator. They will get up to about 18 inches, um, 18 inches long and get up to about four pounds right. in size. So this is a fairly small one that we just brought here. Okay, the so you just... Right, so again, you just have to learn how to handle it properly. Mm -hmm. And um, then you're good to go All from right. there. And um, what is quite interesting with them now is just about every part of the lionfish is now being used. Okay. So you have the spines, as I just showed you here. Right. That can be now made into uh, lionfish earrings, which is quite uh -huh. unique. Yeah. The skin of the lionfish is being used in the States to make um, leather. So lionfish leather is probably one of the most expensive leathers now I you can, can buy. I can only imagine. So they are trying to use every part of it and making it mm -hmm. into one of the most sustainable fish that we can have now in the reefs in the Caribbean and taking pressure off the traditional species mm -hmm. like the groupers and the snappers and getting more people to eat. So it is now recognized by the international markets as the most sustainable fish we can eat. And is it impacting the environment positively? Because I'm thinking if we're doing more fishing of the species. Yeah. So by, by again, as I said, so by, um, get, by us getting more, more households or more individuals to eat the lionfish, mm -hmm. it will take pressure off other species okay, yes. um, at the same time. So yes, it has, there is a, a benefit um, by having the lionfish here as well. Mm -hmm. And they are ex amazing, it's probably the most amazing pest because they actually breed every month, producing 30 to 40,000 eggs. Wow. Every month. So if we don't keep... Mm -hmm. uh, every month? Every month. Wow, oh, they're busy. They're very, very <laughs> busy. <laughs> so we so we always have to keep a very close eye yes. on the movement of the species because if they're breeding so rapidly yep. and so frequently. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. there's uh, right across the Caribbean, there's uh, ongoing monitoring of the lionfish. Um, um, and what we have found is that lionfish live from three feet of water down to 400 feet of water. So they cover the complete spectrum mm -hmm. of the inshore areas. Um, so by just keeping the education and by us continuing to harvest them, we will never get rid of them. So we have, to, we have had to learn to live with them. Mm -hmm. So we have to just keep uh, monitoring them, harvesting them as regularly as we can, and um, keep control on the reefs. Okay. Um, so uh, lionfish hunting has become one of the biggest specialties that we actually teach both to the local um, diving industry and the international mm -hmm. diving market. So wow, that is so bunch of divers come down here and all they want us to do is to take them to hunt lionfish, which is great yeah. because they get in fun and it removes the lionfish off the reefs and we get lionfish to eat. Yeah, but what are, what are some of the... Some, I, I know Chef Maurice here and he has his delicacies there, but what are some of the... Um, what are some of the cuisine? Well, that is actually, it like anything you can you yeah. make with lionfish? Lionfish is a, is a, is, is a very tender white meat fish and can be used in any manner that you want. You know? right. So some of the, some of the cook-ups when we were doing um, demonstrations, so we have it for those who like curry, you could curry them, steam them, fish broth, fried fish. Actually, one of the things we'd like to see is that now that sharks are getting endangered, they become an endangered species, is one day I hope on Maracas Beach instead of seeing shark and bake, it'll be lionfish and bake. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get we trying to get the lionfish to be used 
and in replacement of of the killing of her sharks definitely as well. yeah so we want to thank you so much sean like i said during the break i i kept seeing your name with environmental causes and you know articles and all of that and i never was able to put a face to the name so i finally got the chance i'm hoping that you'd be back because we have so much that we want to talk about so i'm hoping that you come back to brunch and have you know some candid discussions with us well it was a pleasure being here with you and it was a pleasure being able to uh, just give a little awareness as to the lionfish and um Anytime you need me back, as you know, diving is uh, diving is still the number one niche market for Tobago, and uh, right. we are doing a lot of work right now with Tital and the teams there, and bringing more and more divers to Tobago and helping boost the whole tourism side of the economy of Tobago. Yes, and it's so wonderful that you're saying uh, the word tourism. It echoes so much today, being World Tourism Day, exactly. and we just want to say uh, thank you for recognizing it because it is something that is so common to us in the caribbean and scuba diving uh ecotourism so many more people are yeah. getting involved in that yeah actually um again tobago tobago one of the beauties of tobago is tobago thrives on its ecotourism yeah um, yeah and we have the, the best diving here in the caribbean and some of the best diving in the world Mm -hmm. And um, so we are very, very much in the process of bringing diving back to the numbers that it was before. Right. And it is going in the right direction. And the, um, the government in Tobago is doing a very good job at this present point in helping to promote and develop the whole dive market. Definitely. And you heard it right here, guys. You heard it from Mr. Sean Robinson him himself. Tobago, you are a gem. And so we need to recognize and continue to highlight that. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, Chef Murray is going to just take us through really quickly one of his lionfish delicacies. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with brunch, a taste of Tobago. See you guys soon. back to brunch a taste of tobago now i know you guys are so curious as to what is going on uh lionfish as a meal many of us did not know about how many things this one fish could do with me is chef Otel murray and he is a lionfish connoisseur i have to say connoisseur because he is naming some fancy names here and i'm trying to learn them as i go along but chef tell us um, tell us about what you're going to be making for us today and also while you're making it we're just going to talk a little bit with you um, you come from so so very humble beginnings and it's amazing what you were able to accomplish so we're going to start there uh, tell us about uh, the delicacy you're going to prepare and just walk us through it okay um yeah so first our finishing product Mm -hmm. It's lionfish ceviche. Right. Um, mainly household items that you could find all around your house. Basically, you cooking items are um, sweet peppers, tomato, onion, red onion preferably. Mm -hmm. We have some shadow bunny here. Right. And you know it has a different name. We have some cucumbers, salt, salt of course. Pepper. Right. And your main ingredients. Right. Right. Not forgetting the lime to cook the lime fish, mm -hmm. lime juice, and my little special, some orange juice. Right. Right. So um, no ne no necess necess um, special way of adding them. Mm -hmm. All the ingredients into the bowl. Right. You're welcome. I'm a helper, okay? <laughs> I, I help. <laughs> Come on, so. <laughs> Black pepper. Okay. Shadow Benny is, everyone knows Shadow Benny is a great flavor, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah. 
when it yeah. comes to fish, so shallow bay is really good for you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, some of you may know it has fit weed. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we know Bad it has. Yeah. So, right, so it's basically seasoning up. Yep. It's basically a chow. Yeah. All right. After adding all those, you so add So it's like your... a fish chow. Yep. So you could add the lime juice to it. Mm -hmm. Look at it all. Then I like to put my fish last. Right, and you just yep. mix it up all in there. Yep. Okay. And we're mixing. And we are mixing. You want is, to do medium? Is there any? Oh yeah, I love <laughs> to mix. Is there any um, pre-cooking of the fish? No. Is it like sauce? Is it like? It's basic. It's raw. It's not cooked. So it's like sushi. Yeah, basically like sushi. Okay. But what helps us to cook is the lime juice. Right. It takes about fifteen to twenty minutes to cook properly. Mm -hmm. So when you see it, it looks now it kind of clear, and when it started to turn white, then you know it's cooked. Uh, let me let me let me get it from the middle because the yep. middle has all of the yep. all of the good stuff. The good stuff. Yeah. So let me <laughs> let me let me get in the middle first. See all the good stuff in there is in the middle. And as you're going along, I like to add my orange juice. So the orange juice give it a more sweet. So you have some sweet with the tongue. With the yep. Right. So breaking on everything is more suitable. And how long does it take to to set? Because I know you're not gonna get all of the yes, flavor as right soon away. as you mix it in. How long? Uh, as I said, do you put it in the fridge? What do you yeah, do? Fridge, put it in the fridge. fridge yep. So fifteen Good. to twenty minutes, it should mm -hmm. be ready. All right. Well, it will be ready. Not should it will be ready. <laughs> So you basically cover, cover and, and let it seal let it in, sit, yeah. and then mm -hmm. you're good to go. Good to go. Yeah. Let everything cover with the sauce. So you can add the, the orange juice to what you prefer taste. Mm -hmm. So if you want it a bit limey, salty, you could leave it as is. Mm -hmm. This is optional. The orange juice is the optional. The orange juice is but okay. for me, that's my taste. Then. All right. So just remind us, uh, the name of this wonderful Lion it smells fish. divine <laughs> it smells amazing yep yeah so it's uh so this is the finished um yeah. product here the lionfish ceviche all right so what we so this is how it's how it looks this is how it's supposed to look i'm gonna just hold it up and if you can notice all of the wonderful colors and textures and tones. It's like you know, you could you could market it and say you know, like a, a Caribbean. Yeah, it's a beach food. Yeah, Caribbean yeah. cocktail or um, lionfish cocktail or, or or something like that because it's wonderful. It's amazing, and this is is. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I had to do that. So guys, <laughs> thank you so much for being with us today thank you for being with us on brunch we want to thank everyone who came in uh sean we want to thank you dixie Ann, we want to thank you brother michael stewart thank you so much and of course chef hotel thank you for showing us your wonderful you. dishes you uh we are going 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 we will see you guys next time on brunch before we do that though uh trivia uh question for today uh, the THTI campus uh, that was established not too long ago. What was the structure in Mount St. George used, used for before it became THTI? So we did have a winner today. The answer is the Mount St. George Youth Camp. Our winner for today is Lisa Frank Phillips. And Lisa, here is what you get. You get a gift bag from Cicely Louie of Kiss Cosmetics. So we will reach out to you and let you know when you collect your prize. Thank you so much for viewing Brunch today. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing. 
I am Jay Soul, your host, and we will see you again next time on Brunch, a taste of Tobago. Bye, guys. <laughs>